Hey guys, this is Logic Crazy and I'm Jonathan and welcome to yet another Java Chess Engine tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be working a little bit more on the UCI protocol and mainly focusing in on making the moves in our engine. So when for instance Arena gives us a position like this, we need to duplicate this position perfectly with 100% accuracy so that when our engine searches its starting position is correct. If its starting position is incorrect for some reason, even in the slightest bit, even castling rights or uh, the promotion type or whatever it is, then our engine will make faulty decisions because it's based on faulty data. So this is going to take a fair bit of debugging and the best way to do that is to, once we get it all set up, to play many, many games and make sure that it never makes an illegal move. And that should be accurate enough. So let's have a look at this. What I've done is, in our moves, before I had just had a comment that said, make all the moves that the UCI sends me, but now it is all implemented. So what I do is I take the, our input string, and the format looks like this. The position, start, pause, moves, and then there'll be these moves. And these moves are always five characters long a piece, no matter what type of move. It's, if it's a special move or not, five characters. Normally, there'll only be two, or sorry, four characters followed by a space. But in cases of promotions, there'll be a Q or a R or something, depending on the promotion type. So that's basically how it works. And the case of that promotion type does not change based on whether it's white or black. It's always the same, which is a little bit simpler to deal with since we already should know what color should it should be. So what we need to do is take this algebraic notation of C2, C4, and translate it into the notation that our engine is using because we do not use these notations, these C's and uh, any letters. We just use numbers. And actually, the C2, C4 in our engine would work out to be 6 down 2 across. So 6, 2, 4, 2 would be this pawn move here. So we need to translate between the two. So I will show you how that works. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our inputs and after we have made the move, we will remove the first five characters. And then, as long as the length is above zero, so as long as there's another move, we loop through. And eventually, after the while loop is done, we have the same board, hopefully, as the graphical user interface displays. So, I'm just going to put a little debugger stop here if it'll let me for some reason it's not there we go and I will copy this first line which is in the description below the video and paste it in now what we check is is it white to move this is important since it is we come up with a list of moves and we send that to this method which I've created called algebra to move. Now this whole move string I could have placed in the algebra to move method but I did not this time although that is an excellent way to go. So what we're first going to do is we're going to convert this C2 to C4 into two numbers. One indicating the position at the start or the from square to the to square and we start at the top left hand corner and we count across 0, 1, 2 all the way to 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 49, 50. So this move would be represented by 50, 34. Let's see if our from and to do that. Yes. And I should Note that uh, what we're doing is we have characters, and so when we subtract a uh, char from a char, what we do is we get an integer number. That's sort of the reason for subtracting a's and eights from it. 
the A's obviously mean that the character is going to be a letter, and the H meaning it's obviously one of the numbers. And we multiply these by 8, since they uh, represent uh, a new uh, row. So, now that we have our from and to, we still have not converted it fully into our notation. Now, I haven't fully implemented the special types of moves, such as promotions, emphasons, castling, and so on, but most moves will, regular moves, that is, will translate with this if statement. So basically, this if statement says, if this input is identical to the move, based on these from and to locations. So what we're going to do is we're going to check if the move, the first character, which is a 6, and you can see 6 minus the 0 character makes an integer 6, is the equivalent of the from, basically the, uh, the row. And it is. Now we check the horizontal way. And we see, now this one starts at 0 and it should have started at 2. So you can see that the first move the engine thought of was actually A2 to perhaps A3 or 4. And uh, we do the same with the 2's, except just using the next two characters in the move. So I'm just going to let this run, and it does find a move. Now, if no move is found, then most likely your engine hasn't found all the moves. But since we have a perfect perf system, it should work. So we just run it. Now it's just made the moves. Now what I'm going to do is hit print. And you can see that the proper pawn was moved. So this was a success. Now what I'm going to do is copy the second line. And it has two moves. Now it's slightly more it's going to test one other thing, which is our whole loop right here, making sure we go through all the moves. So what I'm going to do is run it. It first comes up with the move. You can see that the input right now starts at C2, C4, and it made that move. Now you can see the input is G8, F6. So this is perfect, and it shouldn't run loop again because that was the end. So now if I hit print, now you can see that both the pawn and the knight have moved. So that was as it should be. And now we have successfully duplicated the graphical board that the user sees. So this is a success. What we do still need to do is implement a few extra uh, if statements just to handle those special notations that we have in our engine for promotions and so on. And one other note that this whole piece of code here, which basically makes the move, uh, oh and by the way, after the move is made, we switch white to move and then we break. So we end the loop and we return. And I should note that all this code here is pretty much copied from our perfed. And that is basically all of this code right here sort of thing. I just had to always add references to user interface. So that is it for this tutorial. Until next time, enjoy Java.